bringing together the companies and nonprofits, helping start a conversation through third party verification, helping you know that the work is legitimate and real and having results and impact, and really sharing those stories because our network actually can touch about 150 million consumers across the media partners and the artists and the ambassadors, the companies and the nonprofits that are a part of it. The hope for our, our opportunity with partnership in the future is around mobilizing and scaling. And now I'll turn it over to these companies who have realized for quite some time that while giving is good, they can do more. And now Sue Harvey Brown. Thank you. We got the, uh, the post-lunch crowd, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> I've got my caffeine right here, just in case. So um, just before I um, start, I just want to preface and to put this in perspective for you in terms of partnerships and, and what 1% means. Um, especially after the last few days of sitting through presentations. Um, I am blessed um, to work with the Patagonia brand. And I'm actually not employed by Patagonia. I work for Wolverine Worldwide. And we have the official license for Patagonia footwear. So as you know, Patagonia recently became a B Corp. So I have a B Corp hat. And then I have that dreadful responsible to your shareholders hat that I deal with both on a day-to-day -day basis. And I have to take my hats off and on, and sometimes I get to wear both, which is really great. <laughs> this is the one hat that I really like the most. Um, so this slide here is our mission statement. And we start every meeting um, on the Patagonia team with this. And it's build the best product, cause no unnecessary harm, and use business to inspire and implement solutions to the environmental crisis. And honestly, you know, with all the wonderful companies here and access to more green manufacturing. Um, everyone can really do the first two of, of this mission statement. It's the third that really makes the Patagonia brand unique. And um, I think it's that one, right? Just, yeah. OK, I did the right one. So this is the original logo and why um, Melody did go through you know, what 1% is. Um, you know, Yvonne early on realized that all businesses have a negative impact on the environment. And it's what you do as a business to in, offset that impact that really speaks to the integrity of your company. And um, it was, I worked at Merrill bef um, while we got the license for Patagonia footwear and I thought it was the coolest thing that we had this 1% commitment. Now mind you, it's um, two years later I joined the Patagonia footwear team. And you know, unlike the apparel team, we were not profitable yet. And a lot of it had to do with actually a 1% commitment. Um, but it was a philosophy we felt very strongly about. But it was something that we needed to do a better job of communicating this partnership. And so, you know, in, in, in order to, whoops, our fonts aren't lining up, so we'll see what will happen here. But in order to better communicate our commitment, you know, why? Because it really differentiated us from our competition. You know, this commitment was a big expense for us. It was 15% of our marketing budget. That's my publicly traded company hat right there. Um, and then we needed something to spark the conversation and then mo make it locally relevant. And I apologize that those aren't lining up. It wasn't intended. So what we did is we needed something to spark the conversation. And partnerships were part of that. So we partnered with 1% and we created the Advocate Mock. And this was a travel-friendly, minimalist mock. It was a, an accessible price point, And it bared the 1% logo. So when someone in stores, what's this 1%? So then we partnered with our dealers. And this was, you know, we had to tell the story to make it relevant. And so we went to our dealers and we said, hey, we'd like you to partner with a local organization that's a 1% organization to tell the story, but to make it local. Because when you look at 1% and you see the map, a lot of people, you know, will see the Fitzroy Mountain Range or they'll see these pictures in Alaska and they're beautiful, but they don't realize that that's their backyard. So the purpose of the program is to really inspire our retailers to reach out to those organizations that were 1% for the planet beneficiaries, or could be. And they partnered with those organizations. So we created the Advocate Weeks. And what was really cool is that they started telling the story for us. So here you see a 1% video. And then here they featured the organization. So all of a sudden the store became a storyboard for us and, and the retailers. So, Here's an example of a slide from one of the Patagonia stores that did a rain, um, encouraged people for water conservation and all the consumers kind of created the display of um, putting up post-it notes and what they, how they conserved water. And then the other one was um, a running specialty retailer 
and we partnered with the Western Michigan Environmental Action Council to create rain barrels, and we had 60 people sign up to create rain barrels. So it was pretty cool, but none of this really would have been possible without the partnerships. And, you know, I, I look at two hats here. The partnerships really made us realize that this program was, you know, it was good business for us. And I think secondly, it really, um, in looking at what 1% meant, you know, meant, you know, two things. One, I've got my B Corp hat on. It was this wonderful way to make this program locally relevant, have our retailers who may have not partnered with an organization before partner with the organization. And then secondly, putting on my um, publicly traded company hat, it was actually really good for business. And as Yvonne said, every time I've done right by the environment, it's been good for a business. And our retailers participating in the program saw sell-through increases that were 60 to 90 percent um, compared to comparable periods. And um, they also were growing twice the rate as our retailers that weren't participating in the program. So again, it was you know, the, imp the high impact um, of these partnerships really helped us take our partnership and this commitment that really now we look at it as an asset. It's not a commitment anymore. It's really an asset to our brand. So that's my story. Hopefully, you're, hopefully that will advance because it wasn't advancing for me. So you might want to click a few buttons. There we go. Okay. So Fleet Canteen has a relatively short history. And uh, this image really takes me back and reminds me of how and where we got our start. And the primary purpose behind the, behind the, the brand and, and our product and that was to give people a healthy alternative to single-use plastic. We didn't have any strategic meetings that resulted in a list of strategic goals back then. And we didn't really have an idea of where we would end up, but knew we wanted to make that connection between the Clean Canteen brand, consumers, NGOs, and our corporate friends. So with what little budget we had, we loaded the cars with product and set out to attend business to consumer green events and music festivals in Northern California and the Pacific Northwest. We've come a long way since then and have learned a lot, primarily from listening to folks like yourselves, reading, paying attention to the industry and what others are doing, and listening some more. Today our event outreach has grown considerably and stretches across the country. However, our delivery vehicles are relatively unchanged and our bottles and most recently our stainless steel pint are still great simple solutions to reducing plastic pollution. Our look is a bit less homegrown and our outreach with our and partnership with the nonprofits and corporate partners is, is much more deliberate. no big surprise that we profit from the, from the manufacture and sell of our product. And we strongly believe that it just makes sense to share and give back to those that are out there doing the good work. And the 1% for the Planet model has really helped us organize our giving to be in line with our core values of health and environmental stewardship. The greatest rewards that we have recognized from our 1% commitment are the amazing relationships that we've developed with our nonprofit partners that we have supported and the corporate partners that we have collaborated with. And the resulting brand growth that we have seen, which has further strengthened that connection between Clean Canteen and the consumers, which was exactly what we were seeking to do in the very beginning. This past summer, we launched our stainless steel pint at events across the country. Our focus was to, was to draw from our relationships to develop access to clean water and other beverage without the normal plastic pollution. The campaign was pretty successful. And the highlight of the, of the season was the results that we saw at the outdoor uh, retail trade show where we partnered with Patagonia and Osprey for a dual cause to benefit the Buffalo Field campaign and to encourage event attendees to ditch single-use plastic 
and to protect habitat for all species. We were thrilled to work alongside Patagonia and Osprey to introduce plastic-free happy hours to the outdoor industry. We have, we have recognized that with simple solutions, people are enthusiastic about reducing their plastic waste and are more than willing to buy in when it supports a great cause. The, the, I wanted to share this slide with you from the last event that we attended. Uh, it was a fundraiser event for American Rivers and the freeing of the White Salmon River after nearly 100 years. And this image to me just really shouts out freedom at last. Thanks. <laughs> Um, so, um, I'm Katie again with New Belgium Brewing Company, and um, how many of you have um, heard of New Belgium? <laughs> Had a fat tire? Okay, local crowd, that's always good. <laughs> I put um, mine in my clean canteen the other night. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're having all kinds of uh, mixing going on between the three companies. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, we uh, started in 1991, and um, it was the idea of our co-founders, Jeff and Kim, and uh, before Jeff and Kim ever took their first, or sold their first bottle of beer, they took a hike in Rocky Mountain National Park and they defined their core values and beliefs. And they said that uh, these are things that matter to us as human beings and we don't think that a, a business should op operate by a separate set of moral guidelines. And so, um, so at that time, uh, you know, we, we really decided we were a values-driven business and, um, and we realized that we were here um, not just to make money for money's sake, but to enhance people's lives and make the world a better place. And so, um, so we have a set of values, and those, that set of values is not something that just sits on a plaque on our wall or on a piece of paper um, buried in our strategic planning documents, but it's something that we live every day. And so um, you know, it translates into a really nice um, acronym of um, love. So every day we're loving, we're living our values every day. And, um, and that really helps us um, to be who we are. And, um, and we're also under the leadership of now of Kim Jordan. We're employee owned um, and our CEO and co-founder is, is a woman. And she really embodies you know, all, a lot of the feminine aspects within leadership. And that has created um, a really uh, cooperative and collaborative environment within the brewery, within our coworkers. And so it's not surprising that um, that, uh, that spirit of collaboration and cooperation really um, bled into our philanthropy efforts um, and mixed in with our values. And so um, today we fund in f five primary categories and, um, and we really strategically chose these, uh, these categories because we found that they were areas in which um, New Belgium was directly benefiting from. Water stewardship being a, a big one because you know, water is the primary in ingredient of our beer, and we also gather um, that source, from, that resource from um, threatened water systems in the United States. And, um, and so uh, we weren't always this um, targeted. Uh, we, you know, since the beginning of New Belgium, we always donated one dollar per barrel of every barrel of beer sold um, to a nonprofit. And it was really, um, you know, getting that influence from 1% uh, for the planet whenever um, it, we started up there, um, that really helped us to realize we need to become more focused and strategic with those philanthropy dollars. Um, so like Mel said earlier, it's more than writing a check. It's how do you really create a difference? How do we move needles? And in these specific areas, where, we, where are the opportunities for doing that? So um, through, you know, learning uh, about Patagonia's work and several other companies um, that are also leaders in sustainability. Um, we kind of took on that, that program as our own as well and, um, and have really benefited from that. And one of um, our fun projects here um, is Save the Colorado. And um, about, uh, even though you guys know where the Colorado River is, it's on the other side of the mountains, right? So it's, it's on the western side of the Continental Divide, and we live over here on the eastern side. But um, there are 12 pipelines that bring Colorado River water over to the Front Range um, in here. And so Denver, Boulder, Fort Collins, all of us are supplied by that water as well. And so, um, you know, it's one of, um, it's a very threatened river, and it's no longer making it to the ocean. And we wanted to draw attention towards that because um, not only do we want to preserve uh, the river 
River as a playground for our, our great-grandchildren and many that follow, but we also um, depend on a, a quality um, and affordable source of water uh, to keep our business alive and, and our coworkers employed. So um, this was um, an opportunity that we identified um, being very relevant to us, and actually um, Adrian Glassnap is here in the audience, and um, he is an avid kayaker. and. Um, has even been in the uh, BAMP Film Festival for all the cool kayaking videos he's done. And so he's a river lover and, um, and he really helped to bring this idea um, and partner with John Waterman and National Geographic um, to bring in Save the Colorado to um, New Belgium and, and really um, create some, some innovative um, high impact partnerships. So today we have um, a website, savethecolorado.org, and we gathered funds from um, all of these companies that you see listed on the bottom here. So, of course, Patagonia is a great part of that, and National Geographic, and um, Cliff Bar, and many others. And so, together, we've raised um, over a half a million dollars that is being donated to uh, nonprofit organizations who are working to research and repair the Colorado, trying to really, um, you know, admit that we're experts in making beer or clothes or shoes, whatever it might be. We're not experts in water quality and saving rivers. Um, so how can we fund those people who are experts in that um, because our, benef our business benefits from it? And, um, and so this has helped to funnel quite a bit of money um, to several groups who together um, have um, played a really important role in stopping the uh, Flaming Gorge pipeline that would have been quite destructive to the Colorado River. So we're supporting some great groups out there and, um, and, and you know, letting them embody the, the good work. And so um, we also um, found this to be a successful project in the way that we were able to um, integrate this into our advertising. So Adrian coined the term advocacy, which is advertising mixes with advocacy. And we'll be buying a full page ad in the Rolling Stone magazine or whatever publication it might be anyway and we'll be promoting a beer. This is with an old summer seasonal of ours called Skinny Dip. And, um, and so we, why not um, you know, use the playful approach to raising awareness around uh, water conservation and water health. And so, um, so we have Skinny Dippers for a cause and um, we're also selling our beer at the same time. So. Um, so those were um, a couple of great successes within the project, um, and now, you know, as we've been doing this for a couple of years, we're under, trying to understand what the next step is. And I know we might talk about this as a group a little bit, um, but uh, you know, where we are with the Save the Colorado project right now is wondering, um, you know, how do we make, ensure that we're making a unique. Um, uh, uh, donation to this cause, and so how do we are, are we providing unique value, or are we duplicating efforts that someone is already doing? Um, and um, are, how are we kind of taking this to the next level? We have Facebook posts. Um, we're doing a a movie uh, tour with um, Robert Redford um, that features the Colorado River, and um, and so we're engaging people on Facebook, social media. But you know, how do we actually make that into a social movement so that every person who benefits from the Colorado is is being conscious about where that water comes from and how the health of that river is doing for the long term? And so, um, so those are you know a couple couple of the areas that we've been challenged with. But um, we know that it is an exciting project and that we've been able to um, provide a unified uh, voice for um, the Colorado for the whole basin, essentially, and um, to help protect the Colorado River. But you know, our challenge right now is how do we take this um, high impact partnership to the next level and um, and continue to generate change. So. Um, and I'll kind of end with, um, we see this as being you know, good for the environment but, and good for the people, but also really good for our business. Um, projects like these have really helped us to um, build advocates for a cause, and also in that process, they're realizing, wow, this is something New Belgium cares about, and that's a, a company I want to invest in, that's a company I believe in. So, um, so you know, profits make it possible, and, and we find that the uh, people, planet, profits uh, piece of this, these kinds of projects are just um, wonderfully intertwined with one another, and, um, and definitely what is good for the earth is also good for business, um, as Sue mentioned as well. Thank you, guys. It really speaks to the value of partnerships, doesn't it? So necessary, powerful, game-changing. I mean, at a time when less than 2% of all giving goes to the environment and less than 4% comes from companies, it's companies like these that are making a real significant difference. And partnership is really the bridge which goes from just giving dollars to really making a difference um, and enabling the change that we need. There are a couple of 
important themes and threads that I think you probably saw ran through each of these partnerships. Um, and just to summarize them quickly, you know, strategic, integrated, mutually beneficial, and significant and lasting impact. No small order, but we can learn some good things here. Um, you know, deliver clear business value, so both marketplace impact and issue-based change. Um, and align that with your core strategy so that they reflect what you really stand for. I think the values of these companies were really evident in the partnerships that they described. Um, engage all the players, consumers, individual supporters, make it accessible for them, make it meaningful, and of those who are really invested in the partnership, give them an ownership role so that they can feel um, their contribution and share that story all the way to results and impact. Um, and lastly, communicate your wins regularly and often and celebrate them um, a great deal. You know, mm, to fertilize, think back to Telluride, fertilize. And um, you know, when we were in Telluride, speaking of, we were at Telluride Mountain Film was at that time and Tom Shadiak, I don't know if you guys know him, but he is the director of Liar Liar and Pet Detective and all the Jim Carrey flicks. Anyway, he's just written a book about life's operating manual. And he has this quote that he applies to life in general, but I think is really key in these partnerships here. And he says, don't deliver just what the world needs. Figure out what brings you to life, what makes you alive, and do what makes you alive, because the world needs more of that. And if you think about the real hearts and minds that these are touching, that's what's happening. It's the spirit of the partnership that's really making it work. And when they're done well, they allow us to celebrate the potential of what we all can be.